This video is brought to you by my ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss. The link is in the description. The first reason that you as a nice guy may not be getting the results you want is because of overwhelm. In other words, you are trying to spill out your entire life story to a woman or you're doing the absolute most. You know, you're, this is where you get into things like texting nonstop, calling nonstop, asking her on dates all the time, trying to like spill out all your feelings by date two or three, trying to already plan a future with her after a couple of dates because you don't wanna play games, you already see this going somewhere and you wanna let her know. And so you're dumping all this stuff onto her, thinking that this is what women want and that you being a nice guy means you're not going to play games. Darn it, if you like her, you're gonna let her know and you're gonna let her know all the time. You're gonna let her know your feelings. You're gonna let her know what you're, th she's, you're thinking about her. You're gonna let her know all this stuff. And while that is nice to do, that causes too much overwhelm for a woman early on in the dating process when she's just trying to figure out if she can remember your name, the kind of car you drive, what your favorite color is. Like she's trying to go at this bit by bit because she's trying to build up and establish trust and doing that kind of analyzation of you on her end of things takes a bit more time. So you figure she's trying to let you know things here and there about her and you're trying to like flood the gates with all this knowledge about you and it's causing her to feel a bit of overwhelm. Now, nice guys are able to share things about themselves and their hopes and their dreams and et cetera, but they're not doing the thing of oversharing, of doing the most, you know? And I think sometimes nice guys that are failing with women think that they have to say all these things or show all these things in order to attract women. And they, because, they, because part of them has bought into the lie that not doing that makes them dishonest. And you being a dishonest guy would now make you a jerk. And if you're a jerk, well, you're not trying to identify as that. And therefore, you're trying to do anything you can to remove the jerk label, including not feeling like you're hiding things from her. So instead, you're doing the opposite and telling her all the things and doing all the things. And those that are doing that kind of stuff, while it's nice, it's not nice in a sense that you're overpowering her brain with so much stuff because she's trying to now think through like, who you are and what you are and also your feelings and her feelings and what, and it's, it's way too much. So you have to learn that it's perfectly fine. You can still be a nice guy and scale back the information you're giving a woman. You can scale back how much time and attention you're giving her. And that works out great because she wants to be able to, as she's thinking more about you, be the one to come to you, be the one to come and ask you questions versus not asking you any questions because you're giving her all the information, you know? So not doing all that overwhelmed stuff does not make you less of a nicer guy. It just makes you a guy that is more in control. It makes you a guy that understands that women want to get to learn you. And part of the fun for them is asking you questions and trying to find out more about you versus you just giving them all the things. All right. So that's the first thing. The second reason why nice guys that aren't able to get women are failing is because they are overthinking and trying to be perfectionist. Now, obviously on this channel, I tell you guys, hey, you know what? When you are dating a woman, you need to be planning dates. You need to have a game plan strategy for how you're gonna build up her attraction, like where you're gonna take her, what kind of things you're gonna talk about, but knowing when to talk about those things, you know? And so that stuff is actually very good, you know? But guys get into this realm where they start overthinking every single solitary minute little detail every little move they're going to make they're trying to figure out okay well i got to say this exact word to her versus this one over here or i got to call her at 745 not 746 because if i call her 745 and, and it's like you don't want to get into this thing where you're you're overthinking so much about stuff that it doesn't look or feel natural to her as to what your dating process is like i tell you guys for example i have a whole blueprint at my website, introvertdatingsuccess.com in the Introvert Dating Success Academy program that walks you through the three month timeline of what you need to be doing in order to get women. As you learn that timeline, these things will start to become natural to you. But the idea is it is a blueprint to give you a roadmap. It is not telling you do these exact things and then you'll get this result from this woman because women are unpredictable and women are gonna, you know, you're gonna say a thing or do a thing and this particular woman might 
come left field at you and not like the thing you're doing at all. So it's more like a guideline, but it's designed to be that, a guideline. It's not designed to be rigid. It's not designed to try to make you into a robot where I only do these moves and I gotta do this thing exactly to do this thing, whatever. Like, it's good to know what you're doing, but it's not good to do things to a T where it's like you're overthinking it so much that it's not fun, where you're always, stre always stressed out in your brain, she can feel it, now it doesn't feel natural to her, and now on her end, it feels like you're trying to fake things. On top of, when you're overthinking, part of the reason you're doing that is because you are trying to appear as absolutely perfect to this woman as possible. And the reality is that, yes, it's good to you know be aware of what you're doing and try to show up as best as possible, but leave room for the, for the possibility that if things don't go 100%, it's totally fine, you know? I've had instances where I wanted to take a woman to a really great restaurant that I knew in town, and I get there, and the restaurant is packed, and we can't go in. If I were to just melt down and be like, oh, this isn't perfect, I'm so sorry, princess, I didn't know, I didn't know, then I wouldn't be able to continue those dates. But what do I do? I have three or four other places already in my head of where we can go. So if something happens, boom, I can maneuver on the fly. That's an example of I pre-prepared, but I'm not overthinking. I'm not thinking if this isn't perfectly we're gonna go out the way that I want it to, then this is gonna be a ruined day. And sometimes guys end up doing that, and then the girl's sitting there like, I don't need this to be 100%. You know, most dates are designed to like, you go out, you're supposed to be talking to her. Ideally, those two things are happening. Everything else outside of that is like a bonus. So if it's not completely perfect, that's fine. If anything, it'll add to the stories women will tell later about, oh, when I first met him, we went on this date, and oh, you know, things kind of went haywire and blah, 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 but I still liked him. Like, women love having those kind of stories. You know, I've had plenty of those stories before, you know? And so don't think that, or rather, don't be so in your head about having to be so perfect that you make this not fun for you or her, because that is the easiest way to turn a woman off relatively quickly. Uh, the third reason why certain nice guys are not able to get women is because they do not know how to set boundaries, all right? Let me give you an example. This person left a thing in Reddit under the am I the a-hole thing, and his title is, am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend to block her one night stand person before us? So he says, recently a friend of mine and my girlfriend were talking, and I thought my girlfriend had always been honest with me. However, I found out that she had a one night stand before we got together, which is again, it's not a problem. They weren't together at the time, but, and now that guy is messaging her on Instagram, commenting on her photos. I never asked who he was, but after discovering this, I confronted her and told her that I lost some trust in her. <laughs> I asked her how she could let a one night stand guy text her if we're committed. She said it was funny to her, which made me angry. I told her to block him or I would reconsider our relationship because I want to set my boundaries clearly. Am I the a-hole? So the fact that the first thing this guy said to, him, to her is like, you, I, you're, you're texting this other guy. Oh, I've lost some of my trust. That, that, you, that could be true, but that sounds like a really wimpy response, you know? Now, me, I tend to tell girls when I'm first dating them early on, Hey, by the way, I don't keep friends with exes or people that I've hooked up with. So just, I just want you to know that. And so I don't know if you do that or not, blah, blah, blah. But when I say, I don't know if you do that or not, that is me saying, you now have the opportunity to tell me if you have anybody in your past that you've hooked up with or that you dated that you're currently friends with. And I'm assuming you guys don't have kids together. So there's no reason for that to be a thing. So let me know now because this is your out. If you, if, if you say, oh, I, there's this one guy hooked up with blah, 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 I can say, okay, cool. Well, you know what? Hey, for now, let's just keep it the way it is. And if that happens to change up, then we can let you know, whatever, right? So I'm already setting up early on in the dating process that this is a boundary that I have, that I do not date women who are friends with exes or people they hooked up with. So that way she knows early on, that is a thing of mine. If I find out later then that she is in fact doing that and she did lie to me, I don't even give it a second thought. I'm just like, okay, you know what? Well, you know what? You guys have a great time together, I'm out. Like, because I set that boundary early on and she knows in advance that that is something that I do not find acceptable. So I say kudos to this guy for attempting to set the boundary, although it's a little bit late, but the fact that he's like, I lost some trust in her. I asked her, how could she let a one night stand, blah, 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 blah. Like, 
Again, that comes across as a little bit wimpy, but it is what it is. At, least, at the very least, at least he's trying to set a boundary. But there are plenty of guys out there that would be more like, well, I mean, can you just block him and, like, don't do it anymore? And then if she was like, I don't want to do that, they'd be like, oh, okay, well, well, just make sure you don't, like, invite him over or whatever. And that's how you'd be losing women. Because the reality is women want guys that are going to stand up for themselves. And so that can sometimes mean that there's going to be things that come up because you don't know this woman when you first start dating, all right? And so when that happens, understand that you have a chance then to set a boundary. And when you don't, on the woman's side of things, women don't like the idea of dating men that they can walk all over. I know you may be fooled by that because you look out there and see women that are like walking over, over the guy. I've seen those situations too. I find more often than not, it leads to breakups or divorces. And that's because women do not ultimately feel safe and secure with a guy that they're able to walk all over. Why? Because if she, as a female, is able to walk all over you, she can only imagine how much easier it'll be for a guy to come along and just do a few easy threats to you, and then boom, you're out of the picture, and now he's threatening her. So this is one of those things where women are gonna test you to see if you have boundaries because it's for the benefit of their safety. If you can't handle them, they know you can't handle another dude coming to threaten them, all right? So you gotta set that. If you're not a person that is able to set boundaries with women, then you could be the nicest guy in the world, women aren't gonna respect you, and therefore they're not gonna wanna date you, all right? So that's reason number three. Uh, the fourth reason that some nice guys do not get women is because they have a fear of showing toxic masculine traits. Now, there's been a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of commentary in the news about this whole phrase, toxic masculinity, whereby we're made to believe anything we do as guys is toxic. If we try to tell a woman what to do, if we try to tell her where to go, if we try to make certain requests of her, if we wanna you know, show that we have a physical desire for her, that all that stuff, ugh, if you have a voice that's like this, then all those things are, are seen as like being toxically masculine. Now, nice guys will sometimes go overboard so back to, to being overwhelmed or over whatever, overthinking, because we think to ourselves, and this is the way I used to think too, guys. So I'm not just trying to like down you guys. This is the way I used to think too, right? I would hear, I had women friends that would tell me stories about guys that did certain things, you know? Oh, he took me home and slept with me and then he just left me and didn't talk to me anymore. And oh, he's got a bunch of girls that he's chasing and, and that, or that want him. And so therefore he's not really faithful or oh, he doesn't listen. Like, so they'd be listing off all this stuff. And at the time when I was in my, my early, early 20s, I'd be thinking, man, how dare those guys? I can't believe it. But I'd also notice that all, all the guys that were doing those things that were toxically masculine, women were also flocking to them and being willing to be a participant, you know? And so what you have to learn is that some of the things that you've been made to believe are toxically masculine aren't actually toxic. There are actually things that in a woman's squirrel brain back here, we all got squirrel brain, so I'm not insulting women, but in a woman's squirrel brain back here, her natural inclination is to lean towards the guys that are doing these masculine things, whether they are all that great or not, okay? And so what you need to do as a guy is one, get rid of the notion of certain things being toxic. You know, a big one for guys these days, and it used to be for me too, is, you know, telling a woman you're gonna, you guys are gonna do something versus asking for her opinion, letting her you know, uh, in, be included in the decision-making process. Like that's a big thing that guys do now. Where we think we gotta let the woman know and we gotta ask them what they think or feel about doing a thing or whatever. And that's how you get guys that are nice guys that say things like, I wanna take you out, where do you wanna go? She's like, I don't know, where do you wanna go? And then he's like, wherever you wanna go or let's decide together. And you're thinking that's a great thing because you're not being toxic. And she's thinking, can the guy just make a freaking decision without me? I just wanna lean back and be cool and chill and let him take me wherever he wants to go. I don't wanna make a decision about that. But because we're made to believe that's toxic, we get tricked into thinking we need to ask them because we're trying to be nice guys that aren't toxic and that chases away a lot of women. You thinking you gotta be texting her nonstop. It's you doing it all the time chases away a lot of women. But you're thinking, but if I do the masculine thing of just like being on my purpose and not talking to her all the time, she's gonna be butt hurt. Guess what? She's leaving you for a guy whose attention she's trying to win because he's not doing that all the time because he's too focused on his life goals and he'll just happen to reach out every so often when he's thinking about her and that's how that guy's getting your girl and you're not, you know? So consider 
that your mas you being a masculine guy, you need to tap into that. You need to tap into positive masculinity. You need to tap into, you need to, to get over the idea that some of the things you think are toxic actually are toxic and realize that they are not and learn what those things are. And then even if you hear women complain, because women will complain, they'll be like, oh, I don't like when a guy does X, Y, and Z, but she's dated those guys. She's hooked up with those guys. She's not hooking up with you, Mr. Do all the things that aren't toxic masculine. So consider that. And then the fifth thing that some, the, the fifth reason why some nice guys don't get women is you are a yes man. You are afraid to say no to a woman. You are afraid to disagree with a woman. If she has some bonkers idea about something happening in the policy, in the political world or the religious world or whatever, you're going along with it because even though you disagree, you're thinking, but I want to get into her pants and I know if I'm agreeable, then she'll think I'm a good little boy and she'll have a positive idea of me, you know? And I just found that ultimately you got to be a guy that stands up for yourself because there's going to be times where you're going to want to do certain things or have certain thoughts about things and she's going to disagree. You know, you might be a guy that wants to do bungee jumping or wants to buy a motorcycle and you got a girl with you that's like, I don't know, that's dangerous. That's not a good idea. Now, those are things that I wouldn't personally do, but I have other things that I know I like to do that there's some women I've dated before that are like, uh, I don't like that. I've had women that I dated that didn't like the fact that I did a podcast or that I did a video show talking to guys about dating. Clearly that does not stop me from doing the show because I'm, I'm still doing the show. But the point is that just because they didn't like it doesn't mean I was going to stop. And you know what? At the end of the day, they respected me for it because they, women want men that are willing to stand on principle, stand on business, and do the things that they want to do and that they believe in. And so if she's coming to you and disagreeing about something that you're doing or it has a different thought about you than something else, hey, that's totally fine. Because here's the thing, women like interesting conversations also. And women aren't going to get interesting conversations out of you if you're always saying yes or always agreeing with them, you know? If anything, women also wanna be taken out of their day-to-day -day experiences or be thought out of their day-to-day -day thoughts. Like a woman might come to you and have an opinion about something and she's thinking, okay, I have this opinion about something and then you come along with a different opinion. Now at first, she might disagree back and forth. How, how could you think that and blah, 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 blah. But women, the, the number of women I've seen online talking about, I need to be with a man that can teach me something. She might be coming to you, not having full knowledge about why it is that you think the way you do. And at the end of that conversation, you might change her mind. And it's better for you to be able to sway her mind than it is for her to be able to, to sway yours in a negative way. Because obviously like, you know, the whole men are the head, women are the neck thing, like they're gonna wanna be able to have some influence about, you know, whatever they're saying to maybe guide you in a certain direction. But at the end of the day, most women are looking for their men to have the final say and the final opinion about something. And that's, and that's just, that, that's squirrel brain stuff. But that's not gonna happen if you are always like, I gotta please her, so I gotta say yes to her, and I gotta make sure I agree with everything she says, because you know what's gonna happen? You're going to get boring. She's going to already predict that whatever she says, you're going to already say yes to it. And over time, it's going to make her lose interest. All right. So you can be a nice guy and still be charmingly disagreeable. Like everything that she doesn't agree with with you doesn't have to be a fight. You know, you can do it in a jokey way. You can just have a, just a conversation where it's like, hey, I see you think about things this way. This is how I think about it and why. And that makes for an interesting conversation. It doesn't have to lead to a conversation that starts a fight. That is a difference. And most women, like I said, women are pretty good at having colorful conversations and being able to, to think about things in a different way if you are, are open to that. But you just coming to them off the bat saying yes all the time, no bueno, okay? So those are just five reasons why you as a nice guy may not be getting women. Because again, there are nice guys out there that are able to get women, but they're not causing overwhelm, they're not trying to overthink too much about what they're doing with every little move for a woman. They're not trying to make her, trying to, trying to appear perfect or make her seem like she's perfect. They're not, they're able to be able to set boundaries that they want women to respect of them. They're able to be masculine and not be afraid to be masculine. And they are able at times to say no to women. Women need to hear the word no. Now, as a bonus, here's a bonus reason why you as a nice guy may not be getting the women you want. And it is this, is that at the end of the day, you are most likely probably too focused on getting into a relationship. 
And this is a problem that I had back in the day when I would meet a girl that I really, really liked. After being, admittedly, I'd be too nervous to, to ask her out. And then I'd get to a point where I would just tell her I had a crush on her. But I, I, I really was like, if the girls that I liked, I gotta figure out a way to make this into a relationship. And I think that as a guy, you do yourself a huge disservice by focusing on getting into a relationship versus focusing on just the next date. Like, if you just keep your focus on what is the next move I need to make, you have to trust that as you're doing the steps correctly, it will lead to a relationship. So in my, in my Introvert Dating Success Academy program, I tell you guys, it takes a woman two to three months to solidify her feelings enough to wanna be in a relationship. But you can help that along by doing certain things along that process and just knowing that if you do these things in the process, the end result, more likely than not, is going to be she wants a relationship. So two and a half to three months, that's like 10 to 12 dates. Over the course of 10 to 12 dates, if you are just showing up and focusing on what can I do today on this date to show her the best time possible? I have found just doing that for each date over time will build up her feelings enough to where she wants to be in a relationship. So I've just learned to focus on the next date. I'm not focusing on three months down the line because then that causes me to have pressure. And when I'm having pressure, I start thinking, okay, I got, uh, I got to get to a relationship. So I got to start doing, you start trying to do all the things that you would do as if you're her boyfriend and being in a relationship with her and getting into a relationship with her are involve two different processes and sets of tools. Some of them overlap, but a lot of things you're gonna do during the attraction phase are gonna help build up our attraction a lot faster, but you might stop doing some of those things once you get to the boyfriend phase. So while you're building up the attraction, again, it's date to date. On each date, what can you be doing on this date to build up interest? And it's not things like over complimenting, getting flowers, getting cards and candy, all this stuff, right? I talk about this kind of stuff extensively in some of the eBooks that I have as part of the Introvert Dating Success Academy community. So you go to introvertdatingsuccess.com, you can see on the front page what the community is about and what it all has to offer. And if you like that, you can be, you can go ahead and join. It's a, it's a low monthly fee, but you'll have access to all these great tools that are gonna help you in the long run so that way you'll know, again, how to be focused on the day to day of a dates versus thinking, I gotta get in a relationship. I gotta get in a relationship. Because I have never been able to successfully get into a relationship by thinking about getting into a relationship. I know it sounds backwards, but you focusing on other things like how to talk to women, how to show them a good time, the kind of dates to take them on, what things they're actually interested in, those are the things that by proxy will get you towards the relationship, all right? So hopefully this little bit of this show has helped you out in terms of like knowing that you again, as a nice guy, you can be nice and get women, but there are certain things that women are gonna be turned off by if you are trying to show certain niceties that they don't actually need. So hopefully this helps you out.